No, obviously cycling isn't free, but it's a sentiment I often hear, which is not in reference to the purchase and maintenance of the bike, but rather its usage. My name is Nick, and I love not having to commute by car. Subscribe for regular content. First and foremost, this is not meant to be a competition or knock against cycling in any way. There are many, many positive knock-on effects and externalities, which if not incalculable, are at least outside of the scope of this video. So with that out of the way, no, cycling isn't free. Just like any method of transportation, it needs energy to get moving. And in this case, that energy comes from the calories we eat. And the question I want to answer is what is the dollar amount it costs to commute by bike? That is essentially the mileage, that's calories per kilometer. Obviously that can vary widely depending on what type of bike, conditions of the bike, route, weight of the rider, whether I'm eating bargain bin ramen or the finest fatty tuna there is to offer. The list goes on, but let's be real, this isn't going to be scientific. This is just to satiate my curiosity. To get there, we're gonna need some information, starting with the calories. Now, I could just use one of those calculator websites, but I know that I wouldn't be satisfied with just that, so I went out with a heart monitor and rode 7.5 kilometers in one direction, turned around and headed back to simulate a 15 kilometer round trip, which is the average commute distance in Vancouver. The app told me I burned a total of 519 calories or 34.6 calories per kilometer, which funnily enough was one calorie off what the calculator said I would burn. And those 519 calories are equivalent to two donuts from Duffins, one cup of poutine, five large apples, and this many beets. But there's our first piece of information, 34.6 calories per kilometer. Accurately finding the second piece of information is a bit more dubious, which is the cost per calorie. For the purposes of this thought experiment, I decided to use the average calories per day consumed by Canadian men in my age range and the amount spent on food per year. They happen to be 1,978 calories a day and $5,396 a year or $14.78 a day, which means the average someone like myself spends is around 0.75 cents per calorie. Multiply that by our 34.6 calories per kilometer and we end up with a price of 26 cents per kilometer of cycling, or $3.88 for the average Vancouver commute distance of 15 kilometers ridden at around 20 kilometers per hour with an elevation gain of 130 meters by a man weighing around 200 pounds on an old mountain bike that needs some air in the tires in damp conditions, you get the point. There are a lot of qualifiers and this is just an estimate. So 26 cents a kilometer. I was surprised by this. I actually didn't think it would be this high. That's $931.20 a year in food to get you to work in back. Though I thought it could be even higher because the daily food cost seemed a bit low. However, even the four foods I listed are priced around that $3.88. But to put this into perspective, let's compare cycling to a couple other modes. First, the one I use most frequently, an electric scooter. A while back, I made a video about how much electricity they use. So pulling from there, the cost, which I still have a hard time believing, is just 0.3 cents a kilometer or 4.5 cents for 15. In another mode I seldom use, a car based on an 8 liter per 100 kilometer efficiency rating and today's local gas prices, fuel costs would be 14 cents per kilometer or $2.10 a day. And while the scooter is miles away from either, it is interesting that the raw fuel costs for the car are lower than the bike by almost half. Or is it? Because there is still something missing here. When you step into a car or hop on a scooter, you don't simply suspend animation and stop burning calories. Even if you're sitting on the couch smashing a box of noodles right now while watching this, you're still burning calories. So for the sake of simplicity, I am assuming it takes the same amount of time to drive or scoot. And over those 45 minutes, I would have burnt 183 calories in the car or 225 on the scooter. Adjusting our totals, the scooter now costs 11.5 cents per kilometer or $1.72 a day, and the car 23.1 cents a kilometer or $3.47 a day. But that's still not good enough for me. We need to remove the resting metabolic rate because the thought of paying to stay alive makes me a bit uneasy. It's as if life is like playing on a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade cabinet. Anyway, my resting rate as per this calculator is 69 calories for 45 minutes. So deducting that from our three modes, we get the final totals. For the scooter, eight cents per kilometer or $1.20 a day. The car, 19.7 cents a kilometer or $2.95 a day. And the bike the most at 22.4 cents a kilometer and $3.36 a day in energy costs. Just a mere 12% difference between the top two, which would amount to a savings of $200 a year in energy if you drove instead of biking. And with all that said, I can't stress this enough. It's crucial to highlight the broader picture. Beyond the mere cents per kilometer calculation, cycling offers a wealth of benefits that far outweigh its nominal food-related costs. Firstly, consider the health benefits. Cycling isn't just a commute, it's an investment in your physical and mental well-being. 
The regular exercise you get from pedaling to your destination eliminates the need for a gym membership, saving you both time and money. Even comparing the risks to health benefits, the bike wins 20 to 1. In the financial aspect, the total cost of owning and maintaining a bike is a fraction of what you'd spend on a car. There's no insurance premiums, no hefty repair bills, and certainly no parking fees or fines. And these benefits also extend well beyond the individual. Cycling reduces congestion on the roads, leading to less wear and tear on public infrastructure. And this in turn translates to reduced taxes and public spending on road maintenance, benefiting everyone in the community. So while the cost of kilometer might place cycling at a slightly higher rate than scooting or driving when viewed in isolation, this perspective shifts dramatically when we account for the big picture. The advantages of cycling from health benefits to financial savings and community contributions far surpass those of the other modes. But still, I am satisfied knowing that it costs me somewhere in the ballpark of a quarter for every kilometer that I ride. With that, my name is Nick. Thanks for watching.